Like we can end the podcast right there. Everyone listening, if you do those things, you will be successful in anything you want. Focus on the fundamentals relentlessly for a long enough time consistently. And I promise you, but most people won't do that. They'll give up very quickly. And I can say that through firsthand experience. I can tell you a dozen things that I didn't fully commit to the fundamentals on. I can tell you a dozen things that I didn't stick with it long enough and a dozen things where I was inconsistent. And every single one of those things, I didn't achieve anywhere close to what I was capable of. You know, I found there's a handful of traits that that unite all high performers. It doesn't matter if it's in real estate or investing, doesn't matter if it's in any other domain. Um, There's really three that come to top of mind. Now, there's probably a dozen, but the three that stick out the most is a belief in the fundamentals. It's, it's a lesson that I learned directly from Kobe Bryant the first time I ever met him when I asked him, you know, why he was the best player on the planet. And his answer was because the best never get bored with the basics. Like he never got bored with doing the fundamentals over and over and working towards mastery of the simple. So the number one thing that unites all high performers is they don't get bored with the basics and they respect the fundamentals. And think how that applies to every area of our life. I know for me personally, anytime I'm not performing at a level that I believe I'm capable of, it's because I've unconsciously started to drift away from the basics. I've unconsciously started to to try to skip steps, to, to try to do something a little sexier instead of just drilling down on the basics. Uh, the second is high performers have learned to blend confidence with humility in a very masterful way. Confidence is attractive, we can all agree on that. And in basketball, confidence is king on the court. And, and confidence is earned in a variety of different ways. Uh, confidence is keeping the promises you make to yourself. Yes. That is definitely one pillar. You know, confidence is the little voice in your head. How do you talk to yourself? Do you talk to yourself in a kind, empowering, compassionate way? Or do you talk to yourself in a very critical, judgmental, and and harsh way? That will either raise or lower your confidence. Confidence comes from demonstrated performance. It comes from competence. You know how the best shooters on the planet are confident? Because they've been in the gym making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of shots when no one else is watching. The reason Stephen Curry is the most confident shooter to ever exist is because he's seen the ball go through the basket millions and millions of times. And most of those times have been when no one else is watching during what we call the unseen hours. So confidence is earned through demonstrated performance. If you want to get good at something, then start working on that craft. Start seeing yourself improve. However, if we have that confidence and it's earned, we have to continually blend in humility because it's humility that allows us to stay open to feedback. Humility is what allows us to stay open to being coached. Humility is what reminds us that no matter how good we get, we know we can still get better. Which is why when you take a player like Kobe Bryant, one of the most confident basketball players to ever play the game and well-earned, but he still had the humility to allow himself to be coached. Still had the humility to say, yeah, I'm a pretty good basketball player, but I'm not even as good as I can be. So we have to make sure we continue to have that humility. Because if you have all confidence with no humility, you're narcissistic, you're arrogant, you're cocky, and no one likes that. However, if you don't have any confidence and you're all humility, you're usually timid, you're weak, you're not very assertive, and no one likes that either. So we need to somehow find a a, a nice dot on the spectrum of that's most comfortable. And and it may differ from you to me, but it doesn't matter. Each of us needs to make sure we blend confidence with humility. So the first is they focus on the fundamentals. Second is they blend confidence with humility. And third is they trust the process. They they don't live and die by outcomes, which is hard because we live in an outcome world. (laughs) We all want a massive return on our investment. We all want to make sure we study and get a great grade on the test. We all want to make sure we win the basketball game. But the the juice is in the process. And, And when you can learn to embrace the process, then you win before you even start. So don't measure your success based on outcomes and outputs. Measure your success based on inputs. Did you make 10 calls today to 10 prospects? If the answer is yes, then today was successful, even if all 10 of them said no. And that is really hard for people to wrap their mind around. I say this as a practitioner who knows the things in my life that I haven't done very well, but I also know the things in my life that I've done really well, and that's been the recipe.